It's Jamie Jams over here, and I'm currently in Nashville, Tennessee, and welcome to the first ever Gear Talk vlog. If you guys don't know anything about me, it's all good. I'm just a session guitarist and music producer from Sydney, Australia, and I'm currently living in Nashville, Tennessee. Being in Nashville, Tennessee, I am surrounded by such amazing gear, as you can see, all these amazing amps right behind me. And I'm currently at a store called Carter's Vintage Guitars. As you can see, this place has amazing gear. And there is the store out there with all that gear. Anyways, come follow me for this vlog as we are going to explore this place and even interview some amazing musicians who are currently about to be on tour as I give them an interview and give them a little bit of a gear rundown of what it is that they're using. So, let's go! It's time to leave Carter's Vintage Guitars and let's drive up to Soundcheck Studios where I meet up with Michael W. Smith's band and we'll check out the gear that they're using for their upcoming tour. Up. We are here with the man of the hour, Mr. Michael W. Smith himself. Thank you. Michael, can you please tell us what is happening in this rehearsal and what you're doing this rehearsal for? Well, we are doing the 35 Years of Friends tour and um, pulling a lot of these songs out of the closet. We're dusting them off. Go Wish Young Man being one of those, which I haven't played in two decades. Wow. Um, yeah, so it's just, it's just it's a blast. And so I've never done this before in my whole career. My whole career. I've never had a... a a set list this long, and um, it's everybody's pretty excited. I mean, it's, this is it's really, really exciting. It's really going to be fun, and you sort of kind of get to update set things production-wise a bit. But it's vintage, it's vintage MW, I guess. Vintage you know? MW with real musicians and with real lots of with lots of crazy changes. That's awesome. Yes, the, the '80s and the '90s. And guitar solos, big guitar oh, solos. Stoogie, Stoogie doing the guitar. Stoogie doing the guitar solo, <laughs> right there. Yep. Yeah. So, can you tell us? A bit of the keys you're playing and what you're running. Well, you know, I'm, I'm playing. I love this little new Yamaha. I've actually had this guy in the studio. This is the new, the new guy that Yamaha's released right there and um, CP88. But I'm basically triggering, honestly, um, a sweet, sweet patch on my Apple computer. Um, just sort of kind of get that sound that's going to cut through because a lot of stuff's really pop. If I was doing a Christmas show, I would, um, I you know, I'd be playing a real grand. You know, I'd be playing something, or if I had to trigger something, I'd be playing something a lot more warmer. You know, but it's just when I'm playing piano with a 65 piece orchestra, it's a different thing. But this pop thing, it's got a cut. And so we've got this sweet, sweet little uh, moment on the Apple over there that really, it's incredible. So. But I love Yamaha. I've been with Yamaha for a long time. They've been really good to me. And they just make great stuff. And this guy actually, uh, in my studio, it actually sounds amazing. What, what I love about this, you've got a grand piano sound, but you got kind of got the upright. If, if you want to go the keen route, you know, and do a little, get, get a little vibe with the upright. It's incredible. I and mean, there's the CP guy. We got a layered piano. Look at that. But, um, but it's kind of fun, you know. Just um, yeah, this, this the Yamaha just continues to kind of come up with all kinds of cool stuff, and yeah. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of Yamaha gear on stage. And yes, we're excited. Awesome, thank you very much, you Mr. Michael it. W. Smith. You got it. So here I am with Stoogie himself. He is playing guitar for Michael W. Smith's tour. 
and we are gonna do a gear run through of Stu's rig. So Stu, All right. let's start off with your guitar, shall All we? Right, yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, one of the main guitars we're using is this uh, Sir S, HSS setup for that kind of 80s and 90s Smitty vibe. Uh, really good for that and those Dan Huff solos. It's gonna be dive bombing all night, I'm guessing. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, another guitar I'm using is my Duesenberg Star TV player. This is one of the Delirious guitars that I had back in the day. I still love this guitar and uh, yeah, I love its versatility actually, and the fact that it kind of really kind of rocks in a nice bright way. <laughs> this is my, again, this is another guitar that I use with Delirious. Uh, Fender Strat, it's like 78, 79, around there, it's got the big headstock, and uh, Bill Lawrence pickups. This is one of the best sounding guitars I have, actually, so uh, it's, quite incredible but uh, yeah so I've got that as well these pickups are a little more kind of like punchy and mid uh, they have a bit more mid power than the than the sir does um, and I kind of like that so I'm looking to kind of swap them out my acoustic because uh, we're doing a, an acoustic set in this um, this is a small body Taylor Grand Concert um, with a classic headstock which I love um, this guitar sounds amazing. I'm using, uh, on all my guitars, I use Daddario strings. These are Daddario uh, nickel bronze. And um, yeah, I just love the way this thing sounds like that. So yeah, they're the guitars I'm at, I've got out on this tour, um, including the Christmas shows that we're doing. I think we're gonna have like about 40 shows between now and and Christmas so 40 shows yeah roughly yeah wow yeah, so massive uh, yeah so as you guys can see this is the Stooji mothership tell us about the spaceship that you have Stu yeah so uh, at the center of it all is my gig rig G2 switcher I've used gig rig ever since they started actually um, I used to have the little MIDI MIDI 8 or MIDI 6 or whatever it's called but uh, uh, so yeah, so that's this, this kind of brains and everything kind of switches from there um, and uh, so I have a, a, a buffer under here that I plug straight into and then it's split and it goes to my tuner so that there's no uh, tone suck on the tuner. Um, comes in here and then got my compressor. I see uh, you love your JHS stuff as well. Yeah, this is version 4 which I think is an amazing circuit so uh, I love this pedal. And then uh, my full drive, trusted full drive, uh, and my kilt, uh, which I can, if you uh, notice here, I can, um, I can, I can switch that. Here we go. So it goes from uh, from uh, from overdrive to fuzz. So that's pretty much acting as a red remote. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then I've got this iron horse, um, which is kind of. So normally I'd have a fuzz as well as my kilt. Um, and, but the reason I've got this iron horse, it's kind of like a rat-ish type pedal. And, uh, um, and, and, and really that's for that, the kind of Dan Huff solos that I play uh, with Michael from the 90s. Then it gets into the fun stuff. So I've got this Julia chorus and I've got this uh, the Pink Panther, but it's really the Lucky Cat delay from JHS. Lucky Cats. Yeah. Pitchfork for the high octave stuff, and then two H9s. One of them, uh, this one here, is all pretty much reverbs and choruses and uh, tremolo type stuff, and then this is all delay. I use the Sailor Quartz Timer uh, for all my have all the songs programmed in um, and that, that keeps everything in time so and going out time. does it have a buffered split going into your amps so um, it's all done from here so from the G2 these are the these are the two outputs and um, yeah so I they are buffered they are they're isolated um, and uh, you can flip the phase on uh, on output two if you want to so out from the G2 into your amp rig, I'm yes. guessing. So my uh, third power rig 
Uh, this is my own signature amp with them, uh, the Majestic 40, uh, which is based around the sound of my park. And then this is a dual citizen. I'm using the AC30 side of this uh, to go in, in pairs with that. So this one's on the left over there, and then uh, the AC30 is on the right there. So, and that, you know, I started using two amps not for a stereo thing, but for like um, just a blend. And uh, and then so the happy accident is when you throw a stereo effect on it, it just goes nice and wide. So. Uh, and these are actually my own microphones. Uh, these are NOS Panthers uh, ribbon mics. NOS Panther ribbon mics. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. And so, that's Stoogie's rig. Yeah, there we go. Michael W. Smith, and we're doing a gear run through. So let's start off with your bases. That's a good place to start, I think. Uh, this is an FGN uh, Express MJ. Just got this back uh, this summer. Really well built base um, made by uh, a, a factory in Japan that apparently did some other work for some high profile makers, which are sort of not be named. But, but anyway, really, really great base. And, uh, jazz bass style. Uh, this right here, just a good old Fender P-Bass American Vintage reissue from about 2005, so it's nice and broken in. Aged Olympic white. Uh, just, you know, just that nice P pickup that just sits right, right up front there and translates everything that your fingers do. Actually, this I've only had a few days. So, but it's it's almost 20 years old, so it's already been broken in by someone else. Uh, Lakeland 55, 94, I guess. And uh, so just, just getting used to this again, haven't had a five in a little while, so it's kind of a, a chance to just uh, stretch myself a little bit. Um, so there you go, and it was shoreline gold, so. That enough. is a beautiful color. I love the color, so yeah. It's, it's already got some dings in it, so I don't have to worry about dinging it up, which I kind of like that. Uh, over here, if you'll pardon the mess, is a, a Mesa Boogie. Uh, this is the, the new WD-800. That just, I think this just came out pretty recently. I've used uh, and loved the Subway Series Mesa Boogie combo for years. I've had that for several years and loved it. And apparently this was sort of their... Um, uh, they, they were inspired by that amp to kind of bring some of the to uh, topology to this, to this one. So D-Class amp with a tube preamp. And how many watts are you running it with? Uh, it's an 800 watt D-Class amp, so very light, but a lot of power. And uh, and then a powerhouse 410 cabinet, which they no longer make, so that makes it even cooler, doesn't it? Yeah. And are you running a <laughs> DI, or are you blending no, it with a mic? Both. We're doing both, and I'm not sure what um, what David's doing up front, but I know he, he really loves the DI tone coming off, and he just we're just getting going with the mic today, so um, I think he just really liked how it sounded. And, we are going to just see what happens. I don't know what will make the mix, but yeah. Uh, over here, just, just got this yesterday. I had to get this last minute because Michael uh, just threw the idea of an acoustic set a few days ago. So uh, a friend of mine recommended this Guild Jumbo Junior bass and really blew me away. Uh, Look at that maple on the side. Yeah, really it's nice gorgeous. solid spruce top, uh, laminate back and sides, but nice, nice job on the figuring. And then and it's a rounded back, but I'll tell you what, the, the plugged in tone really blew me away, the Paizo. Apparently they spent about two years developing this and they even had to wait to get Diodario to, to make some special strings that are very low tension, but the tone just pours out of it. I'm really, really impressed with this. Um, so that's that's new and just getting to know that, but but we, we pulled it up in front of house and our sound guy just, he didn't have to do anything to it. He was used to tweaking 
acoustic bass guitars and having to notch things out. He just pulled it up and went, wow. So, definitely impressed. Uh, pedal board? Yes, um, let's do the pedal board. Kind of, this is sort of being, I'm just kind of reconfiguring things today, but uh, this is like, I don't leave home without it. The, the VT, I love it. Sans amp, made by Tech 21. Just got this, it's a bass mid control, so I like to use it just to bump up an upper mid range frequency on the Lakeland. I've only been using that a couple days, but that's why I bought it, and I, I really dig it so far. Just a Sonic Research tuner, great tuner. I go our optimizer, super, super solid. Octopedal, and this is awesome. Best, best stomp box com compressor I've ever had, uh, the Cali 76 Bass Compact. Um, I, I even had the large format one, and I'm blown away by this one. So, yeah, there you go. Nothing too complex, but uh, just like to keep it simple and play some bass. And that's the bass for you guys. Thank right you so much. My pleasure. Hey guys, Jim Daniker. I uh, played keys for Michael for 20, that's for 24 years next month. Um, so I kind of drive the show. My, I guess my title's musical director, band leader, um, which in our organization doesn't mean a whole lot other than I'm the guy that puts all the tracks together and stems and clicks and stuff for video and, and gets everybody the material. And so it's, it's a big job, but it's a lot of fun. So here we are. Um, I just use two controllers. Um, I don't pull any sounds from these. Um, although, for a long time, I did use the piano sound, the uh, Yamaha CP300. This is um, by far my favorite digital piano on the market. This is what Michael and I have used for, gosh, about 10 years now. And before that, it was the P300, which was the predecessor to this, which goes back to the mid-90s. Um, I like this Roland keyboard, it's a VR730. This is exclusively what I use for my, um, my Hammond V3 because it's got waterfall keys, it plays like a Hammond, you can you know, do palm smears and all that kind of stuff. And of course it has real drawbar controls, um, which I put on the iPad controller for Backstage Pass, I can do it here as well, but Man, when you're playing like a Rock B3 thing, it's a lot harder to reach over and you actually have to look at what you're doing. Whereas on this guy, I can just grab draw bars and go fast and not worry about, am I hitting the right thing? Feels that, organic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is great if you don't have a real draw bar controller. Um, but man, there's nothing like having, you know, real faders to grab. As far as everything else, is my pedal board. Um, just a good old Roland DP-10, which is by far my favorite sustain pedal. It's very, very heavy duty, and um, yeah, they last forever. And Yamaha FC-7, uh, I've got two of them. One is just a spare. Um, once in a while, I'll hook it up if I want to do the custom string stuff that's in the backstage pass. But um, I generally just use expression, and, um, and then the other is just a spare in case this ever goes down, because I really rely on my expression pedal. I'll use it all the time. Um, everything else, um, I've got a USB hub that my controllers are plugged into and in my iPad so it can get uh, power from that and also connects directly to the computer through my snake. So, um, what yeah. about your keytar? <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> well, I swore I would never do it, but this guy, I just picked this up over the weekend. It's brand new from Yamaha. It's called the, what's it called? Sonogenic. And then, let me see, let me turn this guy on. So I've found, I had an old iPhone in a drawer that fits perfectly on this spot. So I set this up with just a handful, eight different patches I can call up on it, and then an expression control while I'm playing. I'm just using this in, essentially as an accordion. We, we, we do a little acoustic set in the middle of this show, and um, but I'm just gonna call up a couple sounds and see what happens. I might do a couple synth solos on it. Um, I don't know, I don't know how I feel about the guitar yet. I swore I would never do it, <laughs> so I'm kind of breaking my own rule. But it, it's kind of cool. I mean, it's, it's very light. Um, and for having, it's kind of three quarter size keys, they're not totally mini, so it's actually pretty playable. It's got velocity sensitive keys that feel pretty good. They're the same keys as on the little reface series that Yamaha makes. Um, but the, the other cool thing I like about this is I can use it in the hotel room for just working with my laptop. It's a nice mobile controller, so, and it's Bluetooth. 
so I can run around. I don't have any cables attached to it. It talks to Backstage Pass from, I might go visit Stu G on the other side of the stage and have a little fun with him. And I don't have to worry about cables. So, yeah, so we'll see. And where can people find Backstage Pass? It is on my website. It's just www.jimdaneker.com. It's uh, J-I-M-D-A-N-E-K-E-R.com. That's yeah. Keysland. That's Keysland. That's Keysland so, with yeah. Jim Daneker. Hey guys, my name is Chris Lidecker. I play drums with Michael W. Smith. And uh, here's here's my gear. So I'm playing Yamaha shells. It's a they're all birch shells. Uh, I kind of like the the birch thing. Is um, it the stage custom that you're using? Is, yeah, sorry, it's a stage custom birch 10, 12, 14, 16, and a 20 inch kick. A 20 inch kick? A 20 inch kick. Wow, not right. 22 or 24. Nope. Nice and punchy. Um, I keep I, part of the reason why I like the birch shells is because it kind of keeps it a little tight and punchy, and I like to play toms. Um, so, you know, the, the birch thing allows you to be a little more rhythmic without everything getting too cloudy and kind of blending together. Um, and then it's a Yamaha steel shell snare drum. And what's the dimensions of it? Uh, 14 by f five, five and a half. I'm not, <laughs> I gotta admit, I'm not like a gear head, so sometimes I forget dimensions of stuff. I just know if I like how it sounds. That's great. That's that's what all so, that matters, right? <laughs> yes. So cool. Um, and uh, let's talk about your symbols. Yeah. I can see they're all Istanbul agop. Yes, they are Istanbul agop. They're um, my favorite symbols too. Hands down, my favorite symbols. Um, so I've got a kind of a mixture. They I have a mixture of the exist line, the traditional line, and these are some own uh, hi hats. Oh yeah. Um, this is like the the Cindy Blackman line, if you know about the Istanbul situation. So um, the traditional ones are a little more washy. They're a little more thin. So I've got a crash here and a, a ride over here. And then the exist ones tend to be like a little brighter and a little heavier. Um, and so the fun thing about playing with Michael is that we do a mixture of his pop music and worship music. And so I tend to stay on the brighter ones a little bit more during the pop stuff and the washy ones a little bit more during the worship stuff. So Istanbul has like everything, every sound you can imagine, and this is just like a small selection of their line, but I love the symbols. That's what I, that's what I got. Cool, and um, I see you're running SPDSX there? Yes, I am. Um, so just a variety of things, some kicks, snares for some of the pop stuff when we do kind of electronic-y sounded things, and then some really like verbed out Claps, tambourines, snaps, things like that. Just, just the accents. It's just like the the little dust on top. You know what I mean? I play pretty much the kit like 98% of the time, and then I'm adding in little things over here. Uh, so awesome. The, yeah, the SPD FX makes it pretty easy. And little extras, Remo heads, I see. Yes. And Vic Firth sticks. Yes. Vic Firth is the. I don't have a deal with anyone except Vic Firth. Um, they're my favorite six, and I managed um, to get like an endorsement deal with them. But all the other stuff, um, I have just because I love it. Just like the reason I was always playing Vic Firth sticks, um, I just love it. I love what I have, and I love these sounds, and so I'm going to keep playing them whether or not I ever have a deal with these companies. So. Awesome. Thanks so much, Chris. Thank you. That concludes today's vlog. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to tune in more. I'm Jamie Jams and I'm representing Gear Talk and peace out. Gear, Gear Talk. Talk.